This video has been kindly sponsored by Audible. You're watching Midwinter Minis, my name's Guy, and I recently got hold of something pretty cool. I spotted a couple of very old, bizarre Warhammer models on eBay, and I thought they'd make the perfect Christmas and birthday gifts for an awesome friend of mine. They arrived just in the nick of time, so let's open them up and see what we've got. Ugh, parcel tape and bubble wrap. The least protective, most awkward packaging to remove for fragile models. Come on then. Only a few more layers to go. Oh, come on now. Ah, right. Now here is crazy model number one. This huge, chunky, one-piece resin model is the original Tyranid Exocrine for the tabletop game Warhammer 40,000. This is a kind of living bio-cannon that can obliterate anything it looks at. Compared to the very refined, modern-looking version that looks like every other hard-shelled buggy Tyranid, this thing kind of harkens back to when Tyranids in 40k had a definite alien dinosaur vibe. And it's pal, crazy model number two. Uh, nope, that's just an arm. And another arm. Aha, here's the body. This weird beast is the Tyranid Malefactor. A model that doesn't really have an equivalent in the modern range. It was a lumbering, land-crawling transport unit, and also packed a fierce punch. Now I wonder if Games Workshop will revive this unit with a new model in this year's Tyranid Codex. Anyway, so believe it or not, bizarre as they look, these are 100% official Games Workshop Tyranid models. They were released back in 1995 and produced under license in the USA by a company called Armorcast. These guys made all sorts of things, from licensed GW stuff like this to resin wargaming terrain pieces, WizKids metal minis to heroic scale Battletech mechs. Uh, speaking of which, if anyone watching has an Armorcast atlas they don't want anymore, just let me know. Now, these unique Tyranids were upscaled versions of their small scale counterparts used in the even more miniature version of 40k called Space Marine, which transformed into Epic 40k for about six months in 1997 before being discontinued. So how does vintage 1995 resin compare to the quality of modern Forge World? And will they even be in good enough shape to give as a gift? Well, to be honest, I was quite shocked. But before we go into the good, the bad, and the serious mold slip, let me quickly tell you about what I've been listening to on Audible while I was hammering away at these old models. I always thought Tyranids looked pretty cool when I started my Warhammer hobby back in the mid-90s, but I never had them as one of my armies, and their stories and lore are still a bit of a mystery to me. To put that right, I decided to check out the book Devastation of Baal by Guy Haley. Now, without dropping too many huge spoilers, it's about an impending Tyranid invasion of the Blood Angel Space Marine's homeworld, and also features loads of key Blood Angel characters like Dante and Mephiston. One thing I really appreciated was that when the time came in the book, the descriptions of the Tyranids were really vivid and tangible. And it might seem a bit stupid, but now I feel like I actually understand them a bit better as a faction in 40k, and not just from how they play on the tabletop. If you want to give Audible a try and see if you like it, head over to audible.com slash midwinterminis or text midwinterminis to 500500 and you can get a one month free trial on me. There are tons of Black Library novels that you can spend your monthly credits on, but there's also loads of high quality content included in the membership. Tons of free novels, podcasts, serialized shows. I basically always listen to audiobooks when I'm painting or modeling, and I feel like it really, really enriches my hobby, and maybe it will with yours too. Speaking of which, I bought these two models as a gift, and I'm going to be giving them to my bestie, Ant. If you watched any of our Tyranid battle reports, you'll have seen his gorgeous army, and he also made a tutorial for Midwinter Minis on how he paints his vibrant colour scheme to help me keep putting out videos while I took time off when the twins were born. He's a seriously awesome person, and I think he definitely deserves something special after a pretty trying year. His birthday is also really close to Christmas, so he often gets one present for both. Well that's not happening on my watch. Taking a closer look at these old models, we can see some pretty common resin issues. We've got mold slip, we've got ugly casting gates, we've not only got plenty of bubbles that have caused some areas, especially on the corners and sharp places like the horns, to be quite pockmarked, but both models are also covered in countless teeny tiny micro bubbles. 
Also, several of the horns and spikes have been broken off at some point in their 27 year life. And to be honest, there were so many little problems with these models, I was starting to think that they were recasts. Given Armorcast's reputation for smooth, flawless casts, but then I checked some high res pictures of box models on eBay and saw similar issues, so I think these mid 90s Tyranids may have just been cast by the intern. While the models are cool and retro and very fun, it's going to be a real pain to fix all of these casting issues, and I don't really want to give someone a gift that they basically have to entirely fix before they can even have fun with it. So I'm going to do it myself and get both models game ready so Ant can just enjoy the presence straight away. First though, a nice warm bath. For the Tyranids. These models don't look like they've been painted before, so there's probably still some old mould release agent on the models that will stop paint adhering properly. A quick all over scrub with a toothbrush should get rid of any of that, and then we can start trying to fix up as many of the imperfections as my sanity will allow. Let's glue on this little bit that snapped off in transit, and also file off any slip lines and mould lines. The smaller ones were easy to fix with a file, but the larger ones needed a bit of TLC with a hobby knife. I'll also resharpen this dull spike that the casting gate was attached to. And then to make sure the missing spikes don't just break off again, I'm going to reinforce them by adding a metal core. I drilled down about 3 or 4 millimeters into the center of each spike with my pin vise, snipped up a paper clip, and glued straight lengths of it into the holes with super glue. Now to make the horns, and also fill the nastier gaps on the models, I'm going to mix up some milliput, which is a two-part modeling epoxy putty. I smushed equal quantities of both parts together until they were a solid colour, and then I left that blob for about an hour. Milliput is super soft when you first make it, almost too soft, so I let it cure for a little bit before working with it, and that way you can get a little bit more control when you start sculpting. Fortunately, spikes are really basic shapes to sculpt, so I formed a rough shape that covered the length of the paperclip, squeezed it a little bit more towards the top, and then just left them to cure. Once they're a little bit harder, I can carve a slightly more refined shape for these proto blob spikes. Once the four missing spikes were fixed, I went around the models filling up the most egregious casting bubbles with milliput and smoothing them off with my silicon tool. You always need to make sure you keep your tool wet, otherwise the milliput won't be lubricated enough and you'll just end up in a big sticky mess. Well, hey, that was almost too many things to comment on. Now having said that, I actually found that after the 20th or so filled bubble, it was actually a bit faster for me just to use my finger to apply and smush in the milliput. This bit on the spine-like section of the Malefactor had a real casting problem, and was missing quite a large area. The fact that these models are so obviously hand sculpted with really visible tooling and crafting marks means I can attempt a bit of simple sculpting of my own to replace the missing part, with a bit of patience and a moist toothpick. The next day, once the milliput was pretty much cured, I started carving away the bulbous bits of the spikes until they looked all sharp and cool. And I don't think the original spikes on the back of the Malefactor were as curvy as I've made them, but it doesn't really matter, they still look cool. Okay, prime time. I gave all the parts an all over spray with grey primer and then a blast of white. Now how else are we going to achieve a suitably vibrant retro paint job? The only problem is that now everything's so bright, you can really clearly see all those tiny little bubbles everywhere. I mean, it looks bad up close, but essentially I'm using a macro lens here with a very fancy camera, but you can't really see them with the naked eye when they're on the table in front of you for example. Be that as it may, I'm going to use a very diluted wash of gesso, which is a kind of liquefied plaster primer for canvases, and this should settle into some of the micro bubble gaps and fill them up, without obscuring any real sculpted details on the models themselves. I probably used one part gesso to four parts water for this, so the surface tension is totally gone, it just seeks out the gaps on the surface rather than sticking to the flat parts and creating texture. Here you can see the two rightmost armour plates have the gesso applied, but the one on the left hasn't. And it's still not perfect, but I think you'll agree the difference is night and day. Okay, old t-shirt down on the desk, you know what that means. Airbrush base coating time. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on the paint job to be honest. This is a gift for Ant, and I'm going to be matching his vibrant Tyranid scheme. The techniques have already been skillfully covered by Ant himself in the video he made for the channel last year. I'll leave a link to that episode at the end of this one, and in the video description. 
Basically, a fluorescent magenta on the fleshy bits, a few thin coats to ensure a vibrant poppy colour, shade it with Caraberg Crimson, and then re-establish the mid-tone with some magenta dry brushing, finally a mix of magenta and off-white to add a little bit of quick and dirty dry brushed highlights. I thought I had the exact P3 blue that Ant used for the armour plates, but I must have imagined it. I made a close approximation by mixing two similar blues and base coating the big armour panels. Two thin coats should do it. The horns, spikes and claws got a base coat with corn red, which honestly looks so brown when you contrast it against these crazily vibrant colours. The key recesses of the blue armour were shaded with Drakenhof Nightshade, but there were also quite a few areas that wouldn't take shade very well at all, like these subtle curves in the Triceratops-like crest of the Exocrine. For these places I airbrushed a mix of Coat Dance Aquamarine and Drakenhof Nightshade just to add a subtle, shadowy colour transition. I carried on, following Ant's painting guide. The only little deviations were being a tasty wet blend of Goblin Green and Sunburst Yellow for the Exocrine's eyes. And I also added a couple of thinned layers of blood for the Blood God on all of the gross, fleshy folds that these models have. Now by the way, these two... Um, can I say labial orifices at the back of the Malefactor are apparently the transport access points for the other Tyranids to climb in and out of, according to the rules. And there we go. Two rare, vintage 1995 Tyranids repaired, restored, and painted up for my best friend's Christmas and birthday presents. I hope you've enjoyed watching the process and checking out these weird, wonderful retro models. I've got lots of other old hammer and middle hammer stuff that I'm going to be covering on the channel in 2022, so if you like the sound of that, hit the subscribe button. I've painted quite a few retro Warhammer bits and bobs on this channel already. Gretchen, Space Wolves, a Zote, an Ultramarine and Chaos Warrior from the 94 Citadel paint set, some Necromunda stuff. Again, I'll leave links to all of those videos in the description, just in case you fancy checking them out. I really appreciate you watching this video. Now please share it with a friend if you've enjoyed it. Also, a huge, heartfelt special thanks to all of the channel's awesome Patreon supporters. I simply couldn't do this without your continued support. And I also give a shout out to new members when they join up. So here are the most recent members of the team. Kenneth Dieterich, Danella Dragon, Gordon Vincent, World Class Diggy, Derek T. McQueen, Alfarius, Bjarki Brynjolfsson, Adam Wood, Will Honey, Kieran Hutchings, Johannes Shu, Kevin Mild, Matt Plays Warhammer, Justin Weiss, Lord Emperor Roman, Captain Fry 24, David H, Ginger Ninja V10, Nugget Farm, Screwbite, Ben Miller, Benny, Brian Weddle, Christopher Redding, and Shovel Me Harder, Creep Boy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to grab your one month Audible trial on me by heading to audible.com slash midwinterminis or texting midwinterminis to 500500. And I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.